Hey everyone, welcome to Vlogmas Day 17. Today I'm going to give you an update on my bonsai. So uh, with the ones that I've worked on, I'm going to show you a before and after photo. Um, maybe talk about some of the ideas that I had when I was doing them. And then I'm also going to show you what they're like today and how they're growing after the work that I've done on them. Because uh, some of them I did a couple months ago, some of them more recently. And you can see what's going on with them after all the you know, wiring, pruning, repotting, whatever. Um, yeah, and then I'll just show, give you a brief overview of the other ones that I haven't worked on yet. And um, yeah, that should cover pretty much everything. So I hope you enjoy. If you've got any questions about particular plants, um, please leave them in the comments. And if you have any particular requests regarding bonsai, let me know because I am working at a bonsai nursery now. So I want to try and really get into it more and do more work on bonsai. So if you want me to find something out or if you just want me to try a new tree, um, it's possible. I may be able to do it. Um, so yeah, just hit me up in the comments. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so let's start off with the figs. Now, this fig is, I think, the oldest one that I have, um, the first bonsai I ever made when I was in high school doing workshops. Um, and as you can see with the before photo, um, there used to be a branch on the left side, but at some point that's died and that's completely unbalanced the tree. So, um, yeah, a little bit sad. But what I ended up doing was just looking at that and going, well, it is very one-sided, in which case, let's make it windswept. And so that's what governed my decision with that one. Um, and I'm not sure if I've just gotten stronger as I've gotten older or if this is something to do with um, the season. Um, so I think I did this one back in October. Um, and, you know, just as everything's starting to grow and, you know, the sap's starting to flow and all that. And so that may have made the branches um, more pliable than what I've experienced in the past. So I was actually able to get it to bend quite nicely. And um, it just looks so much more interesting now as a windswept than it did in the past. Now, obviously, um, this the type of tree that it is and then, um, you know, me kind of problem solving has made it not like 100% perfect windswept style, but it is so much more interesting than it was before. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that went. Maybe the one other thing to note about this is um, if you look at the pots, I, I did have to upgrade this pot because it was just so root bound in the original. I think I probably have repotted it a few times over the years, but um, because I got depressed and neglected it for ages, it's been stuck in the smaller pot for ages. And you can see those aerial roots that have really thickened up and solidified were barely even fitting in anymore. So that's why I upgraded it to the larger pot and it looks much more comfortable there now. Um, I also slightly changed the front of the tree um, just to suit things better and uh, yeah I think that's all for this bonsai we'll move on to what it looks like today. By the way sorry if I'm a little bit repetitive I filmed what the trees look like today separately from when I'm recording um, the before and after photos and I have not coordinated at all what I'm going to say in one segment as opposed to another so I may be repetitive at times and for that I'm sorry. Okay let's move on. Here's what this bonsai looks like today. So at the moment I'm just letting the new branches grow. Uh, when I did this all these little ones weren't here. Um, so um, I probably need to keep an eye on these, make sure they don't get too long. Uh, I might even tip prune them in a bit. Um, and then once some of these, these little ones grow, then I'll do similar things to what I've done with this little branch and get them to, um, like wire them up to go a bit that way so that you continue to get that effect of, um, them being windswept. I'm also going to have to make some decisions about some of these little ones that have come up in awkward places. Um, because they may not be in the positions that I actually want them. But yeah, that's how it is at the moment. The next fig we're going to look at is the one that I think I did in my Bonsai Basics video. So this one would have been done in about 2006 originally. 
Um, now, same story with all my other bonsai, it's been through a lot of neglect. Um, and at some point, you can see in the before photo, rather than wiring it up, I attempted to pull down the uh, branches into a nicer position using string. And I think this is, um, you know, this is probably how they did it before we had bonsai wire. Uh, bonsai wire tends to be aluminium wire, um, which is quite flexible, but coated in copper because copper doesn't corrode in the same way or like, you know, harden the way aluminium does when it's left to the elements. So, um, yeah, I, I guess I went for a more of a traditional way of doing things, but you can see that I've actually anchored those bits of string to the aerial roots at the base of the fig. Um, so maybe not like the best way to do it. It's a very um, lazy budget version of how you would um, try to manipulate bonsai in the traditional way and I wouldn't really recommend it. Um, clearly I just was like, ooh, this shape is bad and I want to fix it but not fix it properly. So that's what that's about. So um, same as the last bonsai, it was heaps root bound, stuck in that pot, like there was just no way it was going to go back in comfortably. So I've upgraded the pot um, and given it more of a wiring, giving it more curves, because you can do so much more with wire than you can with the string. But I only did it for the branches down the bottom because then you can see that huge bit just sticking up that has nothing going on with it. And um, I, at that point, was just like, I don't know what to do with this. I'll think about it later and just see how it grows and, you know, cross your fingers. So, yeah. Um, now the photo I took of the after is a little bit um, of a funny angle, but um, overall, you know, not a huge change, but enough that I think it's sort of getting in the right direction. And the main thing for this tree was probably to repot it so that it can continue to grow. Here's how this one is today. So the biggest problem with this one is just how bare it is up along this trunk. And um, yeah, so I'm still thinking at some point to cut it hopefully around there or maybe even lower depending on how it grows. Um, but I'm just sort of waiting to see what happens. I've been tip pruning this um, top bit in the hopes that I can stunt the growth of this area and hopefully encourage it to grow more down the bottom. There is this little one that has just started to sprout here. so. That's good. Um, it's in a better position, like it's alright. You've got, if I can just pan down a bit. So we've got our branches going alternating. So one, two, three, potentially four. Or depending on how things go, I could possibly cut around here and make that the new head. Um, but yeah, it's sort of just a wait and see at the moment. So perhaps another thing to look at with this tree is on the back, I've got this bit which is quite bare. Um, not sure how well you can see it, but what I've done with the wiring is um, this actually used to be the main branch and then I've bent it back so that this becomes the continuing bit of the branch. And I wasn't sure whether or not to completely cut this off. Um, but as I sort of hoped, it is getting, um, it's really hard to see some tiny little buds here and here, which will turn into leaves. So I guess we'll see how it goes. It's not ideal that this is so much thicker than this bit. Um, but, you know, it, it, it kind of works for the moment, it also helped with the wiring, so um, we'll see how that grows and that's something else to make a decision on later. Next, let's look at this uh, twin trunk. So, um, same as all the other figs, I've had to upgrade the pot. Um, but with this one, in terms of styling, I went a little bit crazy with it, as you can see. It's um, started off looking more like just a regular tree and then it sort of morphed to become this octopus creature, which um, I will say this is not a normal bonsai style. This is just me being me. Uh, I am a little bit weird and I, you know, I'm all artsy kind of whatever. So, you know, use that as an excuse to do whatever I want. Not all the bonsai do are traditional. Um, with the original uh, one, you can see it was getting a little bit out of shape. It was losing that sort of um, triangular uh, canopy that you kind of want to go for and it was like what do I do with this because the trunk on the left side has great branches it's growing really nicely but on the right side it's pretty much just got those two branches and it's like w what do you do with those I could cut them in a way that hopefully they grow lower down 
or I can do something with them and I decided to do something with them so that um, with the uh, the after picture you can see um, I'm now emphasizing the trunk on the left side rather than um, being strictly more of a twin tree kind of uh, thing and with the before photo you can see that the twin trunk thing the illusion is actually created by one of the branches on the left side um, sort of reinforcing the way the right side looks so it wasn't really developing in the correct way for a twin tree anyway you can also see that part where one branch has been cut I think that um, branch got damaged and so it had to be cut and um, that's one I've talked previously I think I turned into um, a cutting um, first by growing aerial roots from it using some moss and then when the aerial roots came I cut it off and then planted it um, to become a new tree and that was just because it was already damaged it was broken it was either cut it off or try and turn it into a cutting um, yeah, there was no way to save that branch on this tree, so that's why that had to go, and I think that destroyed what the original twin tree looked like. I could probably dig up, maybe, I might have a photo of what this tree looked like um, originally, but I, I don't have time to do that today. So if you'd like to see what this tree looked like before, um, let me know and I can try and dig up some photos for you. But yeah, in its current state, it wasn't really going to work as a normal twin trunk kind of thing. So that's why I've gone for this more artsy octopus kind of thing. Yes, occasionally my sensei have been like, what are you doing with your trees? And um, I haven't had lessons in a long time, but I am continuing the tradition of me and my weird ideas. Here's how the twin trunk fig looks today. So yeah, it's not really a pure twin trunk sort of thing anymore because, um, you know, you've got your base and then it does split into two. But instead of making this a second sort of head of the tree, I've just focused on this one. Um, and it is getting its own little side branch here. Um, gonna wait and see what grows in between because I'm not really happy with how bare that is. But, you know, we'll see in the future. And also, like... You can, as you can see, I haven't really designed this according to traditional bonsai principles, really. It was a bit of a tricky one in the first place, but um, the weirdest one that you probably couldn't see in photos and stuff before is this branch actually does a bit of a spiral. So if you notice from the front, it's like going back on itself before it goes back out. And it actually is a little bit of a spiral there. Okay. Which, you know, you're not really supposed to do, but um, once I did it, I liked the, the look of it for myself. Um, and it also helped uh, shorten this branch without me having to cut it, because, um, yeah, you know, I, I liked it. Um, it just was way too long. And to be fair, this bit's a bit long as well, um, so I'm going to have to see what grows here. But we are getting some small shoots, we can focus on that. Yep. So we'll keep an eye on that and see how it goes. It's going to be one of the more artsy bonsai, I think. You know, less traditional, more wacky me. I'm also going to have to decide what to do about this back branch because it is super bare and quite long as well. So um, depending on how things grow, I may curl that around as well or maybe just trim it. Um, you know, when I say curl it around, make it curvy a bit like that, uh, this bit could potentially do something with that but I'm, I'm kind of hoping it grows because I think if I've got too many curls uh, I might confuse things a bit visually from the front so yeah just gonna keep an eye on it and see what happens yeah, and if you check out the back and you can see this huge root um, and then you've got smaller ones so with figs if you don't cut off these um, aerial aerial roots um, and just let them grow they can turn into something really thick like that um, it's a little bit too thick for me to cut, I think, so kind of ugly, but it is at the back, at least. Um, I don't know, I may have to make a decision about that, or if I just allow more of these roots to grow, 
hopefully eventually they can catch up a little and you know make this not look so random but um hey that's nature for you it's not going to do sensible things all the time especially when you neglect them so we'll see what happens but I may have to get rid of it because it is just so ugly it's just um I probably didn't because it may have a lot to do with the root system um you know like maybe it's balancing out the roots there if 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 this doesn't have enough roots and I cut off that it may hurt the tree so that's what I'm concerned about I guess um even though I neglected these bonsai and didn't repot them for a long time, uh, a lot of them didn't have quite as many roots as I expected. Like the part where it was root bound, um, it, it wasn't properly root bound in the sense of all the roots being completely jammed in there. There was still quite a bit of soil, which was surprising, so that may be why I kept this in. I don't actually remember. Um, but next repotting season, I guess we'll. Well, next time this one needs repotting, I'll have a look at that and make a decision, I think. Because really, you can't see it from the front, so it's not too much of a problem, but it is a problem. Okay, so let's look at this one. Now, this one could be the cutting that I took from um, the twin trunk, but there's another one that could be it as well. I don't remember which one's which, um, and I'm not sure if I have a photo record of whether or not that's the case. But either way, it's um, one of the smaller, weirder bonsai that I have. And um, this one is probably the most dramatic transformation that I've done of all the figs. So um, as you can see in the before photo, there's not really anything going on with it. Like in terms of bonsai style, maybe the closest one that it's even inching towards would be the broom style, which I have no experience in. You're supposed to do it with, I think, deciduous trees and... Um, yeah, I, I like it's only got the beginnings of it and I think you need to do some really uh, targeted pruning to get that broom style. So I was just looking at it going, I don't know what to do with this because you could maybe, maybe aim for a bit of an informal upright, but the problem is it's got three key branches coming from the one spot and so you're going to get um, parallel not parallel, you're, you're going to get that thing where the branches, instead of being offset up the branch they're gonna all come out of the same point and you don't really want that in a proper informal upright style so I was just looking at this one going I have no idea what I'm going to do with it um, the front of the tree wasn't really working for it either because it's sort of leaning a bit away to away from you and um, yeah it just wasn't working so I I really wasn't sure what I was going to do with this one um, let me just check on my Facebook if I had any thoughts yeah, okay, so what I said on Facebook is originally um, one of the thoughts I had was to um, make it look a bit like a claw. So if you turn it, um, if you turn this one around, um, you could almost make it look like these fingers coming out of the ground, like out of a graveyard. And this, this I did about Halloween time, so I guess I was thinking that about that a lot. But, um, you know, that would really be embracing the ugliness instead of bonsai. And, um, you know, so this three-fingered hand coming up out of the ground, it could have been a cool, cute kind of idea, but I'd, after playing with it a bit, I ended up coming up with this solution where I ch completely change the front of the tree and then I knock it over because trees get knocked over in real life. That happens. Um, and for all kinds of reasons. And trees will continue to grow. So I've knocked it over and now it's this sort of hybrid windswept semi-cascade kind of style. It's not perfect because I'm dealing with branches that don't really conform to how these bonsai styles should be done. But um, gosh, it's such an improvement. It makes it so much nicer. It does give it the illusion of being more bonsai-like um, despite all its problems. So, um, you know, you could... Because it's not 100% conforming, you could maybe put this in the my weird bonsai category, my artsy kind of thing, but um, it is inspired by normal bonsai techniques. And um, yeah, just like sometimes when you have like a really problematic bonsai like this, you need to take an extreme approach to make it interesting and presentable. And of course, you don't have to follow rules. You can be creative. And this is the creative solution I came up with. Here's how this one's doing today. Not a whole lot has changed in terms of the branches that are cascading. Um, I think there's not really, not really been too much growth. 
um, that I can see. It may be because it's in too much shade, so I might have to change the position on that. It's just a bit tricky because it is in that cascade mode um, where to place it uh, in our little setup. But it's doing all right. Um, when you come around, oh, I'll just show you here, like some interesting branches. Yeah, they're all a bit squiggly. When you come around to the base though, you can see right at this junction, it's growing a lot of small shoots. Um, so not exactly where I want them to be, but um, I guess I keep an eye on them and make a decision. I do need a, like sort of something to be the um, head of the tree, so that could be this one. Um, but it is a bit of a weird one, like it's not a proper, semi-cascade or windswept sort of style it's a bit of a, a combination um so yeah we'll see how we go it goes but it does look pretty good it's surviving um yeah i'm pretty happy with it Okay, so this is the last of the figs that I'm going to show you, and this is by far the most problematic. And unlike that semi-cascade, that I, I have no idea how I'm going to make this seem more like bonsai in the future. I, I'm really going to have to wait for branches, because as you can see, like the main changes I've made is just upgrading the pot to something a little bit bigger and slightly changing the front of the tree. Um, there's really nothing to say about it. It's just, it, it's a problem. Um, I changed the front slightly because um, in the original, like that V shape, it, it's just calling way too much attention to itself, like how problematic it is. Um, with that straight bit going off in one direction and the, the kinky bit going off in the other bit, it just wasn't working. So by slightly changing the front of the tree, I'm making that, that straight one look more like it's just going straight up and then the kinky one um, going off to the side, like I'm making it look as if it's a choice instead of just nature being random. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this one because if I cut off one of the branches, I, I think it's just not going to look right um, if I do either of those options. So um, I don't I don't know, I, maybe I could wire it up in some weird way, maybe that kinky bit I could make it go into more of a cascade kind of mode, um, but the straight bit is too tall for that to really work. So yeah, and it's it's annoying having one be super straight and one be super bendy it's just it's it's all this juxtaposition incongruence is just doesn't work so this one if you have ideas please let me know because i could use some i have no idea what i'm going to do with this and whether or not maybe i just give up on it trying to be a bonsai um or you know i i guess i could um maybe try and make cuttings from those branches and turn it into separate trees um i would have to get rid of that main stalk if i did it because yeah that that main stalk going off into the each side it, it's just never going to look pretty i feel it's never going to look like bonsai so i don't know still thinking about this one but yeah i got no clues you let me know if you've got any Here's how this problematic tree is looking. Um, it looks pretty healthy, it just hasn't grown a whole lot and, um, you know, because of that it's going to be a while before I can really make a decision on what to do with it. So yeah, the main spots it's growing are the, the tips, um, so we've got one bit growing there, one bit growing here, um, is there any more? I think those are the main, the main spots that it's growing, um, whereas where, what I really want it to grow is somewhere under here so I can decide what to do with it. Now it is just starting to get a little bit of something in there. Yeah, it's just starting to get some shoots there, so hopefully we can, you know, get some more options because this is such a weird tree, you know, with having the one super straight and one super curvy, not knowing what it's doing. Um, I don't know that anything's growing on this one. At the moment. 
so hard to focus. I don't think anything really is growing on that one except at the very top, so yeah, I'm not sure what to do. I can't just cut it off because it's um, I think not going to work well with the way the trunk is. So uh, this one's going to be a challenge stylistically to figure out what to do with it. On closer look, I can see there's one little bit growing in there. Um, and I think a little bit further down that might be another bud just coming through. On this one, um, I think just right in there. We can, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to focus on it, but like right in there. Can you see that? Just there. And then um, the other branch, there was something just there. Just there, there's something growing. So it's just starting to get a bit of growth on the other branches. But yeah, really what I want is more down here. Um, because I think I am going to need to grow other branches if I'm going to have any chance of styling this nicely instead of it just remaining a mess. I mean, it could just remain a mess because that's its own kind of artsiness, but if I want it to be bonsai, good luck. Maybe it is a Lost Causes, like, proper bonsai, though, because the branches are just not right. Um, and so I'll go for maybe more of a natural, you know, let nature decide what to do with it or else become more artsy with it. Moving on, let's look at some different trees. So this one, I think is juniper. Um, I get a little bit confused with some of these kinds of trees. Uh, I can't remember if this is one of mine or one of mum's, um, but you know, mum gets me to do all the work on her bonsai anyway, because she doesn't really remember a whole lot. Um, so yeah, you can see pretty sad. And I've done that thing where I'm trying to, um, in the before photo, I'm trying to style the branches the lazy way, just with like kitchen wire. Um, just trying to pull them downwards rather than the wrapping around style and it was looking pretty sad um very top heavy with that foliage um but yeah really out of whack with the styling so with the after photo um yeah i i've gone for an informal upright uh kind of style there's a certain degree to which i couldn't curve that central branch so you want it to be more curvy at the bottom and then gradually lessen as it gets to the top. So the way this one's done is kind of the opposite to that, which is a little bit unfortunate, but you know, you've got to work with what you've got. Um, and then there is on the, so the first branch at the bottom on the right, and then the second, and then there's the third on the right again. And that one is a little bit thin um, because then the fourth branch is a little bit too thick, which I'm not too happy with, but, you know, cross fingers, we can get some more growth going on there. Um, but yeah, no, looking pretty, pretty traditional styling, um, managed to get it into the same pot. Um, the, the root growth wasn't too bad. I think these might be slower growing trees anyway. So yeah, that's what that looks like. Yeah, so this one seems to be surviving well. Um... I do think in hindsight that I put it a little bit too far off center to the left, but otherwise, yeah, I'm happy with how it's going. So as you can see, it's already um, growing, like it's already got some new growth here after um, the pruning that I did. So I'm going to have to prune those again um, just to make sure it stays compact instead of those things extending too far and making it look stringy. Um, so there's some more bits up here where that's, that growth is occurring and you can see quite clearly on some of these ones, see, it, see how it's like there's nothing happening here and then all of a sudden it's growing really nicely up the top. Um, yeah. I'll just, I'll, I'll give it a little bit of time for some of the smaller ones, but um, once they get too long, I'm going to need to pinch them back just to keep the growth nice and compact. So, yeah, it's happy, healthy, doing well. And just keep going with it, because, um, yeah, it's got a pretty good informal, sort of informal upright kind of style. Um, some of the branches could thicken up a little bit. Um, and then maybe we could have a little bit extra coming down here because it starts to get a little bit bushy on top and not much happening down the bottom. But um, otherwise, yeah, not bad. 
Next, let's look at some money trees. Now, I've got a few of these, so bear with me. Um, we'll start with the worst one first this time, I think. So, um, yeah, in the before picture, you can see it's just grown so damn tall, and it's like, it, it's, it does not look like bonsai. It just looks awful. Um, so, yeah, uh, the real shame is that when you look at just the top, it, the top is actually quite nice, but there's too much of this length down the bottom and then there's a little sucker growing at the bottom. You, you generally don't want those suckers at the bottom because they can take away from the nutrients of the main tree, but um, yeah, so really neglected this one. Um, I don't know if it's one of mine or one of mum's. I have a feeling it's one of mum's, but eh, whatever. This, the, the only thing I could really do about this one was um, repot it, upgrade the pot, and then basically cut it in half. Um, and just hope that something happens with it so that it doesn't look this awful, um, you know, what I've done to it. Oh yeah, I slightly changed the front of the tree again with this one, but yeah, it's, it's a cactus basically. That's what it looks like. It looks like a proper cactus. I'll also just quickly show you the, what I did with the top half of the tree because it was a nice shape to some extent up top. Um, yeah, so I decided to keep that and I made it into a cutting um, with the hopes that it would grow and, you know, just trimmed it. Didn't do any wiring or any of that because it's a cutting, you want it to establish roots more than anything else and just make sure it survives before you put in any more effort into it. So um, that's what I did, just found some random pot because I was running out of plastic pots. And um, it's in some propagating sand because it is a uh, money tree, which I think is like that succulent category of plants. So um, yeah, that propagating soil, uh, that propagating sand is for that specific type of tree. And I was also running out of regular propagating soil that day because I was making so many cuttings. Um, I can show you pictures of that later. Um, yeah, I, I only had the sand left, so I thought, well, let's give it a shot. Um, I may have mixed in some soil, different kind of soil down the bottom, I don't remember, but the main composition of that one is just sand to try and grow some roots. So this tree continues to be a little bit of a tragedy, and I don't know what I'm going to do with it. So on camera, what isn't immediately obvious here is, um, like at, from the front on camera, it looks all right. But when you have 3D perspective, you can see that actually all this growth is towards the back. It's not actually connected to this branch. It's back here. So if you remove that, the, even this front branch is actually quite bare. Um, and then, oh my God, like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this shape this shape shooting out here, going up there. I mean, I could bend it to some extent, but I don't know how, like, what what can I do with this, you know? Get it to turn it into like a singing man or something. Um, it's just, it's not bonsai-like. The very top was good, but with so much nothing, I just cut it off and turned it into cutting, and um, that cutting seems to be surviving all right, so it may turn into a decent bonsai. But the rest of it, like, Really, I don't know what to do with it. Um, it is like at the tip tips starting to grow new shoots, but um, yeah, that's not really where I need them. I need them down here. Um, so this may be a lost cause kind of plant and maybe I should just, I don't know, use it to make more and more cuttings or <laughs> I don't even know. It, it probably doesn't even deserve the bonsai pot and I should just put in a regular pot again, but um, Hey, for the moment, it can stick around and um, we'll just see what the future brings. But if nothing has happened by the time it needs repotting again, I'm just going to take it out of this and put it back into a plastic pot because it I don't think it really deserves to be bonsai. Here's how the top of it is going, though. It's just a cutting in uh, sand, um, but it's surviving. It seems to be all right. Um, that might even be a tiny bit of new growth there. I'm not sure. And also here. So see, this is what used to be on top of the other bonsai. Um, it was way too tall with this, so that's why I cut it off and decided to try and get it to root itself. And then you can have, you know, one branch, two branch, turn that into a branch, turn that into the head, 
you could actually get a bit of a bonsai structure out of it. Now, this one is a little bit too long, so if I can get it to grow something down the bottom, that would be nice. Um, but yeah, we'll just wait and see, and it, it's already a much better shape than the bottom ever was, so yeah, just keep an eye on it. Next up is this sort of, I guess it's like a twin trunk, um, a Chinese jade money tree. Uh, in the before picture, it's just it's just messy. That's the main problem with it. It's messy and a little bit root bound. Um, yeah, so with the after picture, it's mainly about um, trimming it down to size a bit, you know, pruning off the excess. And then styling it to be a little bit more interesting, got some more curves going on. Um, this is another one that's never really going to be a traditional looking bonsai, I think, but we can get it to look a little bit interesting. Um, now, there at the top left, it's I, I left that there. It, it's a little bit too tall, I think, but I left it there because, um, you know, it, it does look kind of nice. Um, so I was a little bit torn about cutting it off. And, you know, you can always cut things back later. It's much harder to regrow something um, so for the moment I was like, well, I think I like it, I think I'll keep it, and we'll just see what happens with the rest of it, but it does make it look a little bit unbalanced, so I may change my mind at some point in the future. Here's how this one's going. Seems to be doing alright, despite wiring, um, because I know this kind of plant isn't really the best one for wiring, it's really quite delicate, um, to do that job, but yeah, no, it seems to be going alright. Yeah, check it out. We've got some new growth coming through up the top here. Um, seems pretty healthy. Uh, there are a few leaves that look like they've been chewed by something, so uh, just watch that because um, there might be some kind of a pest. Maybe the one thing I'm not sure about is whether or not this branch is going to grow anything on it. Um, yeah, seem, it hasn't really done anything that I can tell, so could be a worry, I might have to cut it. And if I cut it, then this sort of shape going that way is going to look a bit off. Um, so I'll have to figure out what to do with this side. You know, it, despite all the curving, it does seem to be doing alright. Hopefully it'll hold its shape when I have to take the wire off. Um, yeah, no, I'm pretty happy. Don't have a whole lot to say. Um, it's not the most traditional shape once again. Um, money trees do grow a little bit weird though, so it's kind of hard to get them to be proper bonsai in that sense. Um, but as far as everything else, yeah, seems fine. And I think this is the last money tree I'm going to show you. Um, it's uh, originally a forest planting. I'm pretty sure it's one of my mum's bonsai. Um, and as you can see, when it was first planted, it was actually quite small and fit into a, quite a small pot. Um, now, with the before picture and the after picture here, this is the first round of me work working on it. Um, so in the first round, at this point, I had run out of bonsai soil. So I had to wait until I was going back to work to get some more um, and also like drainage pebbles. I was just low on supplies. So all I really did in this, this first stage of working on it was just um, pruning it back and I had enough uh, wire to do one of the trees on the front left. Um, so that's the initial stage of this working on this bonsai. And here's the new um, before and after once I did get supplies. So, um, you know, it probably grew a little bit in that period, but it mostly, the before picture mostly looks like the previous after picture. Um, and then what I've done is I've completely repotted it. Um, I actually, what I did is I took them all out. I wired them all up individually, keeping in mind roughly where I thought they should go. Um, and then looked at the trees individually and just like repositioned them. So I think... I'm not sure if I put each tree back where it originally was. I, I can't remember, and it's a bit hard to tell from the picture, which thing went where. Um, 
but instead of repotting it so that the forest setting was exactly how it was before, I rearranged things to make it the best solution for now, um, for today's version of what it looks like. And so, yeah, I, I wired up a lot of it, made a few mistakes with it because um, there were some that I pushed too far in terms of wiring. So I was really worried about losing a few branches and there were a few branches that I had to cut that I didn't actually want to cut. Um, but overall I managed to get the design pretty nice. I mean, it's chaotic because there are so many trees in there, um, but each tree has its own thing going on and then they all come together to make that sort of, um, you know, that, that, that sort of shape where you've got the branches to the side heading up towards something of an apex in the middle. Um, they collectively do that together and that was the main thing I was trying to go for. Um, and then, yeah, I've made it a little bit more curvy to just... I, I, I like curvy. Curvy's kind of interesting in a tree, so that's what I've done with that there. So the Chinese jade forest setting, or group planting, whatever you want to call it, uh, it's doing pretty well. So I think um, with this one, you know, I was a little bit worried because um, when I wired it, I probably did try and push it a little bit much. So I was worried about some of the branches being a little bit broken, um, maybe not surviving. And you can see there are a few dropped leaves. Um, so there has been a little bit of trauma to the plant. But actually, there's also a lot of these tiny bits of new growth. So it's not doing too badly. And... Um, I think it'll pull through and then I've just got to hope that the the wiring does its magic and we can get it to stay in this sort of shape um, yeah once again Chinese jade a little bit difficult to make it real bonsai like but at least I've made it sort of artistic right so yeah and when it when it does come back with a lot more leaves I think it'll look nice so the last bonsai we're going to look at is this maple. Um, and I think I did this earlier in December. Now one thing I'm going to say is I'm pretty sure this is the only bonsai that I didn't repot in the end. Um, and that's because I actually created this bonsai last year um, while I was working on some stuff for uni. And um, yeah, so it, it's, it's fairly young. It was only recently put in this pot, so I didn't feel that the need to repot it. Um, also, I haven't worked with a lot of maples. Um, Mum had a maple two tree setting um, many years ago, but you know we found it hard to keep alive. So I was a little bit worried. I think that might have been it. Might have been Japanese maple. I don't entirely remember, but you know, I, I just was a little bit um, hesitant to work on it because I don't have a lot of experience with maples and like maples being successful. So. Um, yeah, I, I decided to just focus on the styling of it and um, pruning it back because, as you can see in the before picture, it was really, really crazy just with growth going all over the place. And if I didn't start trimming it back, it would just get all lanky. And, um, you know, to try and keep it compact, I, I just had to work on it. I also decided to wire it up to try and get more of a shape going on because when I first planted it, it didn't really look to me like it had much potential for shape at that point. I, I didn't know what to do with it. Whereas now, once it's grown a few branches and all that, um, I could finally, like once I trimmed back all the, all the excess, I could finally see inside it to that shape a bit better and get a gist for what kind of potential it has in the shape. And so the shape that I ended up going for was um, a sort of informal upright. Now the trunk is a little bit straight for that informal style. Um, so I guess it's sort of leaning towards a formal upright instead of just being informal. But um, yeah, I don't know at what point a tree goes from being formal upright to informal upright. I'm not sure where to draw the line there. Now, 
Something else to note is that I have actually turned the pot and put a little marker in it because I didn't repot it this time, but when I was working on it, I thought, ooh, it needs a slight change of um, the front of the tree. And I, I'm not sure, but I think later in the video when I show what it's like today as opposed to a few weeks back, um, I think I forgot that I changed the front of the tree. So if I start talking about, um, you know, the front being different or something, the, just think of this after picture and that's what's supposed to be the front of the tree. Ignore whatever dumb shit I say later. But yeah, so um, overall I'm pretty happy with how this shape went. Like it went from being very square, lopsided square shape to being that more triangle shape that we like in bonsai and um, yeah wiring was not too bad um, and yeah I, I'm pretty happy with how it went and it's just a matter of keeping an eye on it um, now with growth and all that maple is probably the only de proper deciduous tree that I have so um, in terms of care I need to really improve my knowledge on deciduous trees, particularly maple, if I'm going to care for this properly. So um, yeah, that's something I've got to research and maybe talk to my boss, um, you know, I, the people I'm working for, they're the ones who taught me in the first place, so they know all this shit and um, they're training me to be better at bonsai as well. So I'll, I'll probably ask them throughout the year, hey, I've got this maple, what do I do with it? Um, so yeah, I'm just going to have to keep an eye on this tree and learn more about it, but otherwise for the moment it's looking pretty okay. And yeah, of course, when, when it does come time to repot it, I will repot it so that the front of the tree is in the correct position and I don't get confused again. So I'm, I may have to put like um, an actual label on it saying, this is the front of the tree so that I don't forget. But of course, that it, it is possible that it might grow differently as time goes on. So if I feel that I need to change the front of the tree again, I'll just make that adjustment at the time. You know, you don't want to be too rigid because it is a living art form and things change. You've got to go with the change. Here's the maple today. Um, it's doing pretty well considering I did um, get at it a bit late for the season. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, this is one of the later ones, um, the most recent ones that I've worked on, so it hasn't really had a chance to grow, but already you can see, for example, on this branch, there are little shoots coming up at the nodes, so I'm pretty happy with that. We're going to get some extra growth this season. Um, there's another one just here. If we can, uh, how much chance do we have on focusing on that? Not a lot. Doesn't want to focus. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so there is some extra growth happening. Um, now, in terms of design with this one, um, I'm not sure how much you could see in the before and after, but I have done... It's a little bit tricky because I, I kind of changed the front. Also, this branch was a lot longer than this branch, so similar to my twin trunk fig, I've done um, a kind of curl back on itself so it goes back on itself like that and when you get the right angle you can see it is another one of these not exactly bonsai style spirals and I just I really enjoy doing it I know it's not natural and it's not um, traditional but it is kind of fun and it helped shorten the branch so that I wouldn't lose all this foliage um, yeah but as you can see this side has a lot more going on on that bottom branch compared to this side which is just that one bit so really hoping this side grows a bit more but it's a bit hard to control nature so we will just have to wait and see um, but you can see there are little bits starting to sprout here and there so with any luck we can get something going on and I might just have to prune the other side you know tip prune it harder so that it maybe stunts it, but I'm not an expert on how these trees work, so I'm kind of guessing with that strategy. Um, hopefully I'm making a good guess, but if anyone knows differently, I would appreciate comments on it to help me be on my way to getting this look a bit nicer. And yeah, I'm also aware that it's very straight down here, 
and then it starts doing this curve and then I have artificially curved it like that. Um, I think there's just a point where there's not a whole lot you can do once it's hardened too much on certain trees. Um, there's just no way that you're going to be able to bend that um, to match the curviness at the top. But if I left it completely straight, it's a bit like with this one. Um, it's just too long and I want to keep what's going on up top. I don't want to lose it, so it's easier to just curve it. Regardless of whether or not that's proper bonsai style, that just that's what works for me in this and um yeah not not ideal if you're going for traditional bonsai sort of thing but it is one way to solve the problem i think um and let's just have a quick look at the back branch yeah it's looking all right don't really have much else to add all right so now that i've shown you the ones that i've worked on recently i'll show you first of all the how the bonsai corner is going so um I think I've shown you this before and it's a little bit hard with the lighting here, but um, basically the ones that I've done the most work on are up the back um, and then also on this second, the, the other shelf and then ones I need to work on are closer to the front because, you know, easier access um, also I can just do like some tip pruning on some of them if I haven't got around to them yet and then over here we've got Cuttings Corner. Um, most of the cuttings are doing quite well. I, I've only really lost one and I've reused that for another one of those Chinese jades, um, which is just full of other leaves at the moment, so it's a bit hard to see. I've also just, like when I've been lazy, you know, sticking things in the ground here. Um, what, the, that was a maple, which I don't think will, will you know, sprout roots, so. RIP and then this was a fig that I don't think will sprout roots and then this was the root of a fig that I don't think will sprout um, any leaves so yeah they're all not really doing much but here's another maple and most of the leaves are dying but there are some leaves that are quite healthy so I may be able to get um, a maple cutting from this um, now you can see there's some holes here it turns out we've got bees native Australian bees in there so um, I'm probably not gonna do this sort of thing anymore I'll, I'll put my cuttings into proper pots from now on but um, I didn't notice that before so yeah some native bees leaving under there they don't seem too upset by the watering that's going on here so I'm just gonna keep doing that as normal um, yeah and in here whole bunch of money tree cuttings and some of them seem to be doing okay so I may end up with way too many money trees and have to like I uh, know sell them or give them away so <laughs> um bit crazy there but um no let's go back to the bonsai before I get too carried away with showing you cuttings so right up the front here we've got that dead Chinese elm so it's hard with all the green in the back but you know you see all of this is dead and then um I did a video showing you how it came back to life and it's actually growing quite well so um, it has been attacked by like caterpillars and stuff um, so I don't know it might still be a little bit too weak to defend itself properly but I've been keeping an eye on it and for the most part it's growing quite healthily there's a long stalk here on this side some more damaged leaves um, that's just got holes through that leaf which is a little bit annoying um, but it is still growing, it is still surviving, so at some point I will need to repot it because I'm pretty sure the root, the, the um, soil under there is not too good. But yeah, no, it's still going, still growing. Um, I'm pretty happy, I just got to keep an eye on it and if I see any pests, get onto them as fast as I can. Now over here is one that I need to work on. It's um, a group planting with azaleas down the bottom and money trees up the back. Um, I did a bit of a a tip prune the other day just to get a bit of the shape there but I am gonna to have to go in there and see what's really happening with all those branches and it will need repotting and the azaleas are just growing like crazy so I've had to tip prune them a lot as well um, next we've got this big two tree Chinese elm setting and there's so much sun on it that it just looks white but um, yeah I've been tip pruning up the top oh my god it's just impossible to get a good picture here I think hang on there we go hey that's not too bad um, I've been tip pruning bits um, but it's mostly been growing on the edges so I think I've just got to you know trim back some of the unnecessary branches so that it can start growing in the spots that I want it to and then the smaller tree has barely been growing at all so I think it's got too much shade I'm gonna have to 
you know, give it a bit more space. Um, the moss is growing really well though, that's crazy. Really happy with the moss. So yeah, I'm gonna have to repot that and do some serious styling because there's nothing going on. It's, it's, um, yeah, just, just nothing. Um, here we've got a group fig setting. I think it's Morton Bay fig. Um, needs repotting because you can see the roots are starting to escape. Um, God, forest settings are always a little bit difficult to repot because like you've got to deal with so many trees at once. Um, and these ones, they I don't know if they have like fronts of the trees, so that's another thing I got to consider. Um, yeah, and I think I've just, I think I've just been tip pruning this one for the moment, hoping that it'll grow more down the bottom, um, grow some more branches instead of just being twigs going pretty much straight up. So that's what's going on with that one. And like, look at all these weeds I got to get rid of. Um, quick tangent to Moss City, where I'm keeping all my moss that I'm growing. Um, and then we've got two of our Cascades. Really hard to get you a good shot of them because it's so crowded. They have to be up on a step just because they go below the pot. Um, not so much the, the one on the right, but the one on the left definitely goes below the pot. And gosh, I need to do so much work because you can see it's the branches down here aren't so happy but there's a shitload of growth up here. So um, I really need to pinch back that, even it out and give it some more air down here and some more light so that it can grow a bit more and get rid of all this dead stuff. This one's got less dead, um, dead branches and I think it might be growing better just because it's getting more sunlight. So this half of our setup is probably a little bit too shady um, for them to grow properly. So I may need to move things around and I don't know, negotiate with the parents about how I set this all up. Um, but yeah, this one's growing a little bit better down here um, compared to that one. So I think it's just to do with sunlight, but same kind of thing. It's growing a little bit crazy on top and I'm going to have to just really get in there. And the annoying thing about this plant, um, their uh, junipers is they're so spiky. They're so spiky. So I have to wear gloves. Otherwise it, I just feel like I've got pines pricking me all day afterwards like it just the feeling doesn't go away it's really annoying um so yeah that's that's gonna be fun and that's why i've been procrastinating because it is such a big job every time i do them it takes forever um what's next oh yes up here one more fig so this one is on the back row even though i haven't really done anything with it this this year um, this is the one that I've planted on the plastic rock. So at some point I'll do a reveal for you where I take off the moss and show you how the roots are developing and hopefully they're actually developing properly over that over that artificial rock. Um, but it's surviving quite well and I've been doing some tip pruning just to stop the top going too crazy because it is getting a little bit lanky and you know the branch structure you know, it had a nice branch structure in the beginning. I think it was stopped about there and it's just continued to grow and now the branch structure is getting out of whack. So I need to pay a bit more attention to that, I think. But the main thing I'm interested in is what's happening under this moss. So um, I don't know exactly when I'm gonna do it, but at some point we'll do a reveal video and have a look what's going on underneath there. And I think that's it for the bonsai side of things. Now we can look over at the cuttings. Oh, so here's a bonsai that died a while ago it would have been a nice shape um, and interesting roots down the bottom but the pot was too small and this was when I was still depressed so in the heat you know you really need to take care of things in these small pots otherwise they dry out and they die and unfortunately that's what happened but anyway so let's have a look at these cuttings um, I already showed you this one the um, Chinese jade that I cut off the top of that other plant um, oh and actually here are those post-apocalyptic ones this one's you know my weed cups this one's actually getting a bit of a flower on this weed up the back so I'm pretty happy with that it's really exciting how that's growing um, really cute I mean the flowers won't last forever but it does have this really solid plant up the back like it is so solid growing in the cup and a saucer around the cup um, yeah and then it's got a lot of grassy things and when I find weeds I kind of just put them in um, in these cups and hope that they root root there and yeah it's going quite well um, over on this side this one's got another one of those little yellow flowers developing so that's kind of cool and then yeah some slightly different weeds a bit more grassy kinds of things going on 
um, little, some clovers. Um, yeah, so it's kind of cool how they're both doing their own thing. Um, yeah, and then we've got the skull. This is the only skull that's surviving. It's this one. Um, and since I changed the water, um, you can see this is before I changed the water. The leaves were a little bit unhappy. And then since I've changed the water, the leaves are looking quite healthy again. So I just got to keep an eye on that. Now, I've got one of those as a cutting, and then I've also got a bunch of lily pillies that are just starting to grow out of control. Look at that. And this one. So I may be able to start styling them into bonsais. I've never done lily pilly as bonsai though, so I'm going to have to be careful. Some plants don't like wiring, and I'm not familiar enough with these to know if these are that kind of plant. There's some interesting things going on, and if I start training them early, I may be able to turn them into nice little bonsai. Um, some are growing better than others but they're all surviving quite well, pretty happy. Um, yeah, now I've also got a tiny little azalea here, which is cute. I didn't really think I'd be able to get azaleas to do cuttings, but yeah, no, working quite well. Another one of those little money trees. Now this actually has roots. It's not just a cutting anymore. It actually has roots and it's growing. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. And maybe if I do money trees early and just really keep an eye on them that I can get them into a better shape, I'm not sure. But I think I'm going to have to be super patient. And then over here we've got Chinese elm cutting just growing so long. And I'm just letting it grow long because I'm not really sure what I want to do with it. It has this one of those weird twin trunk sort of things going on. So yeah, I haven't really decided. Like, is it possible to do cascade? with a Chinese elm, I'm not sure. Otherwise, you know, and then this root structure down the bottom is super interesting. So I'm like, do I keep that above ground or should I bury it? Like I could bury both underneath and have like a raft style bonsai. So put that below the soil, but technically so that they look like two plants, but they're actually one plant. Could do that. So many options. So I haven't really decided. And yeah, it's getting a little bit of that same bug that the other one has, like something's been eating it. I don't know, so got to keep an eye on it. And then here's another azalea. Two azalea cuttings doing quite well. So, yeah, potential for more of those bonsai. Um, and I think that's all. Oh, I got some more money tree cuttings that are just stuck in the ground a while ago. And this is before I did the ones in the little greenhouse. So they're surviving. So I assume they probably have roots and I should dig them up at some point so that they don't just take over the garden. Um, but yeah. That's, that's how things are going. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, you can see that my bonsai are like, for this update, it's actually like, I'm actually finally getting on top of things. Bonsai actually looking a lot better than before. Um, but yeah, it takes a while to go through them all and explain, which is why I don't update very often. But maybe, maybe what I need to do in future is just as I work on the bonsai, give you updates so that it, I just do lots of little updates instead of one massive one. Yeah, it's hot today, I'm sweating, oh my God. So, um, yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think of the bonsai. If you have any ideas, if you know about, um, you know, the ones that have problems with the leaves, if you know what's going on, let me know because I'm not an expert on this. Um, you know, I'm not entirely beginner. I'm probably like intermediate. So I've still got a lot to learn. Um, yeah, and I'm just really getting back into it. And that's all I've got for you today. For those of you who came here for Vlogmas, I will see you tomorrow. For everyone else, I will see you in the next bonsai video, I guess. Bye for now. It seems it's